Hey, Coach, uh, give me your breakdown of Oklahoma State. Well, they obviously it, they start with the, their two their two main guys. Uh, Isaac uh, like Lay is, uh, you know, just uh, I I don't know how to describe him. I still remember when I went to went and watched him play as a junior. I, I told the coaches uh, when I came back, I'm not sure what he is, but I love him. And and then I had the opportunity to recruit him. Uh, I'm sorry to coach him with USA basketball and. Um, just, you know, he would have been the captain or one of the captains with you, with our USA gold medal team. He kind of does a little bit of everything. He's a point guard. He's a uh, five men for them at times. He's a four man. They post him up. Uh, he's one of the leading rebounders in, in the league. And then obviously Cade Cunningham, who I also had the opportunity to coach with USA basketball. Uh, just, you know, it's a, a special talent. Uh, a lot of God-given ability with, with his size and his body. And then he has a, a really, really good feel of the game. And uh, between those two, it, 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 you have to do a good job of limiting them. They're going to they're gonna get some. But, but the other guys have all stepped up. And, they, you know, Mike has them coming at you with a lot of different people, a lot of different looks. Uh, they, they will play several different defenses to get you – out of rhythm. Uh, I think it'll be important for us, obviously, to take care of the basketball to, uh, you know, to box out um, because they, they, you know, especially like Cade and Isaac, they'll go, go get big rebounds on the offensive end at key times in games. So along with their big guys, the, the twins are very, very athletic. So, uh, you know, it's just, they, they're one and three, obviously they're going to be hungry. Um, you know, but if you look at the games, they, you know, the, what TCU scored the last nine points to beat them at home, uh, West Virginia, they had by 17 or 19 in the second half and West Virginia came back. So they could easily, and even Texas, they played really close. So, um, you know, uh, a mixture of a few older guys, a few younger guys, and they, they come at you in a lot of different ways. This conference is always really competitive, but what's it say that this team was picked for seventh in the Big 12 with that kind of talent? Yeah, I mean, it, it's just, um, I talked with Chris Beard the other night before the game, and, uh, you know, it's just, he just said, how have you done it? You know, has it always been like this? And, and uh, you know, it's just, it, it's just so hard. It, it, it's unbelievable, the talented athletes this year. It seems like the year of the freshmen, you got a lot of good freshmen and and then some you got your older teams the veterans uh, you got great coaches uh, you know and and it's it's tough the league can eat you up very very fast if, if you're not ready to play and talking to the guys via zoom after the game it's it's kind of hard to get a feel for how they're handling the one and three start um, or is it frustration anger where are they at with it right now well I hope a little bit of everything you know uh, you know, just um, the, obviously the frustration, the anger, the, the, the pride has to come out. Um, but we have to play. Um, we had a, a motivational guy on this morning, uh, uh, and he talked a lot about being mission driven and, and keeping and being a mo the emotional toughness and mental toughness you have to maintain. And, you know, it's you're one in three. Uh, you know, a handful of possessions in several games could have made a difference. And some of those were emotional. Some of those were, uh, you know, just breakdowns, discipline. And, and some of those are toughness. So all three of those, that mental, emotional, and physical toughness are, are things that um, I think are easy to improve. Uh, they're right there for you, but uh, it's much more difficult than uh, – then you, then you, you know, it's just, you just can't, you know, snap your fingers and think it's going to change. And, and that's what our, you know, all practice today. I, I just talked about, you know, staying together, helping each other, being there for each other and uh, making the most of the opportunity. Thanks coach. Yep. Uh, next questions for coach Weber. Uh, next question, Michael Goins. 
what Bruce, is there one guy on this team that kind of keeps everybody loose? That's the kind of the cut up and the, the, the joking kind of guy. Um, I think they all enjoy each other. Uh, you know, Surrey's kind of silly. Um, you know, Davion, just a happy go lucky young man. Um, you know, I think, you know, I, I, I really, really would like uh, Mike and Dejuan just to, you know, smile, enjoy it. And, and I think, you know, they want it so bad. I think they, I, I think in a way they've almost stressed themselves out. And, um, you know, you got to prepare yourself. You got to come with emotion. You got to enjoy each other and, and be there for each other. I think that's, that's the biggest thing. And, um, you know, I think that's, that's, that's an important part of it. And, um, uh, you know, that they want to win. I mean, they, we had two guys crying on the bench on, on, uh, on Tuesday night, we had uh, a freshman hugging one, wiping his other guy's tears off. We had guys in yesterday in our practice crying. I mean, they, they want to win. They want to do well. And it's a, uh, this is, it's obviously nationwide. This has been a stressful, uh, nine, 10 months for everybody. When you throw in COVID, I, I thought, you know, I, I've told our guys many times, I'm proud of them. We, you know, we've had 12 games. We're going to play a 13th game tomorrow. There's teams that have played three games, four games. There's teams that haven't played in a month. And, uh, you know, I know we haven't had the, quite the, the uh, results that we want, but, uh, you know, they have gotten experience and they have gotten better. Now I, I hope they can reward themselves by, Enjoying it, enjoying the opportunities, making the most of it, smiling, uh, you know, and it just can't be when shots go in. They got to smile when they get a defensive stop, when somebody makes a good pass. They got to hug each other. They got to, and it's so hard because we discourage chest bumping, we discourage hugging, we discourage all that stuff. But some way we got to figure out something to, to uh, enjoy ourselves and, and, and be there for each other, including the coaches. We got to help them. This is not easy. Is Mike McGurl taking too much on his shoulders, putting too much pressure on him? I think so. I, you know, and not only that, it's minutes too. You know, it, and you can see uh, our our speaker this morning talked about when you when you fail or you're not, you know, when things don't, you know, you don't have the discipline. When is it? Well, one of the things being tired, and and you know, when you're asking Mike to play 38, 39 minutes, uh, he's had to handle the ball, he's had to distribute, he's had to run off screens, he has to guard usually the best guy. Um, it, it's hard, but we don't we don't have a choice. And, and the other night we had foul trouble. We don't have any really have subs. So uh, you know, we he just gonna. And I told him I, I just asked him the other night, can I help you? What can I do to help you? You know, because I I know he cares. He had 12 on the play hard the other night. You know, again, his assist turnovers. I, I'd like him to take a few better shots. Um, you know, he had I think eight rebounds maybe. Um, so he's doing a lot of stuff, but. Uh, you know, hopefully some other guys, it was good to see Selton step up a little bit, Nigel to step up a little bit, uh, maybe ease the, ease the burden on, on him and uh, he can relax and smile and enjoy it. And what kind of general makeup does Selton Miguel possess? And how are you impressed with his bounce back uh, the other night from its TCU game? Well, he struggled, you know, really back-to-back -back games. I know he hit the game winner against Omaha, but if you look at, you know, the stats, he didn't have his better game. So, you know, we put a couple plays in for him. Uh, Coach Southwell convinced me to give him the ball a little more. Uh, you know, the first play of the game, uh, you know, we ran a play for him and he turned it over. So I'm like, oh, my goodness, I'm a dummy. Uh, but we, we went back to him and he did make some plays. Maybe it'll help him. Uh, he, the thing he's got to do is uh, focus on – He's got to get some rebounds for us, get on that play hard chart. He's got to do some of the other things. So when his shot isn't going, he still can be productive. And that's, I think that's, it's hard for young guys to understand that because their whole life, all they did was have the ball score. But now it's, it's, it's different, obviously, at this level. Uh, it's why Isaac Likele is so wet, is, is such a good player because he just wants to help the team win and he, win and he does all the little things. I, I think Dejuan does those. That's our version of Isaac. Uh, but I think Dejuan still, he, sometimes he gets, he wants to do more and, and, you know, just be who you are. And I think, you know, Selton's a very uh, driven young man, obviously 
you know, he was on the radio show last night with us, Wyatt interviewed him. You know, and you think of a young man that came to our country as a ninth grader, didn't know English, and to get where he is now, uh, and not be with his family, not see his family uh, for, now it's been, you know, getting on, I think, 19 months, uh, that, that is not easy. So he, he's a very driven young man, and yeah, you gotta appreciate uh, him and, and, and hope he'll continue to make strides, which I know he will. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, next question to Kellis Robinette. Hey, Bruce, hopefully this uh, isn't the same question on Mike, but for a guy who has, uh, you know, been on teams that have been really successful with older leadership, just how is he handling that aspect of it to go from being on a team that was winning a bunch of games to now being on a team that's trying to climb its way up? Uh, I think he's been great. He knew, I mean, he knew what we were in for. He knew he, he wanted the challenge of, of trying to be a leader. I think if, if anything, kind of what I talked about before, uh, um, focus on, on leading, helping each other, enjoying it. Uh, and, 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 you know, again, if other guys play better, it, it eases the burden on him. And, uh, but, you know, he, he, he wants to do, in fact, he wants to do too much. I think some of his tough shot selection, um, it's because he's just just trying to make a play, and we're just trying to tell him. But you know, he, all the plays early in the game, all he did was we we found a little niche on how to beat Texas Tech, and he drove. He made the skip pass. We made made shots off it. It was pretty simple basketball, and um, just you know, let it come, let it come to you, enjoy it, help your teammates, keep keep fighting. And I heard you mention this last night, but. Um... Would that be a big deal if he wanted to come back next year so you could have him? Well, I, I mean, I'd love him back. I hope he comes back. He missed his freshman year. Um, this is, it would really be a senior year for him because he really, you know, if you look at his minutes, um, you know, I know he, he had some big moments in the NCAA tournament, but, uh, you know, he didn't get the minutes he deserved. And and so I, I, I hope he does. I, I hope he wants to be here and, I hope our team continues to make progress where he wants to be part of it. I think we can be, you know, move up in this league standings and, and battle to get back in, you know, be in the top and be battling for an NCAA bid. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, next question again, Glenn Kenley with KSNT. Hey, Bruce, you guys have had a lot of guys lead in scoring this year. Might be Davion one night and Mike the next night, and maybe Day Swan another night. Do you think that makes it more difficult for teams to prepare to play you guys? I hope so. Um, you know, and and that's uh, the one thing we, you know, we're probably not one on one guys. We, we you know, maybe the age, maybe the, uh, you know, understanding how to win to take a guy, all that stuff. But when we pass the basketball, we're, we're pretty good. And when we share it, I thought we did a great job. Our, our all the offensive stats were pretty good against Texas Tech. Some of the other games, you know, we with you know we make those plays. So I think that as a staff, we're we're trying to help them. We spent more time on offense um, the last uh, last couple of weeks since we got back, trying to help them see find things where they can be successful. Each team's a little different. You got to adjust. Thought, I thought we did a good job against Texas Tech, uh, TCU, and after the beginning, I thought we made, you know, started seeing some stuff. We just missed the shots. So I, it's, and it's got to continue tomorrow because they're going to scramble and mess it up, mix it up on you. Um, and, and you're going to have to make basketball plays. So, you know, tomorrow it might be uh, Rudy Williams hitting, you know, five threes from the corner or something. And, and that hopefully that's, it becomes the strength of us, our, our balance. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, next question to Grant Flanders. Hey, Coach. Um, I just wanted to get a quick update on Monty, if, if anything else has come up since the last game and if he's doing well. I think uh, Monty will, uh, from what I understand from his family and him, uh, he's made a decision probably to have a surgery a procedure. And, uh, you know, that'll be coming up in this next you – know, pretty fairly – soon you know up next week or so um and then that that recovery is probably about six weeks and uh, he gave it a go i mentioned the other night and uh you know just didn't feel he could fight through the pain and he you know just 
opportunity, hopefully, to be pain free and come back and have, you know, get to redo his uh, sophomore year um, and, you know, come back better than ever. So, do you think he could come back this year at all still, or do you think he might? Uh, it it would be, a, I think, it'd be a stretch. You know, you're, it, it, you know, it's probably six weeks. So, if he has a surgery, you know, in the in the next week, you're, you're pushing that last week of the season, maybe, and that's get you know being on the court and stuff, uh, which is again, you don't play. He 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 didn't play basketball for a month, so you missed a whole month. He played for a week, and now you're going to add a, another almost two months on. Uh, that's it's it's going to be tough to come back, and I think he just wants to get that knee healthy, so he feels like he's uh, raring to go a, a year from now. And then last thing I have with, with obviously the Montavious' injury and KC Ziagu, I mean, he's coming back soon, but what is it like in that, you know, big man position with Bradford being really the only, it seems, serviceable big that can play defense and still give you good offense? Well, I, I really thought Carlton the other day, and I, even Surrey gave us their, probably their ball screen defense was the best they, uh, they had been when you watched the tape. Um, and, and they – and they've had their struggles. And again, again, Carlton's a guy who hasn't practiced, or he's mispracticed. Um, you know, it's all new to them. And uh, you know, so it it it, you know, they we got to just keep hanging with them. It, it puts a lot of pressure on, on Davion to play 30 minutes. Um, you know, if we can get between those other two guys, you know, 14 minutes, keep Davion around 26 or so, I think it it really helps. But I, I can't say enough about Davion. Uh, I've said it over and over. He's been my, you know, pleasant surprise of, of those young guys. And he's, he's come way further. I guess the, the, you know, people asked about silver linings the last time or silver lining of Casey getting hurt has definitely been that it's, it's given Davion Carlton Surrey an opportunity to play. Now we, it's made it much tougher on us, but in the long run, those guys are going to be much further along. And then in the two, two road games you've had this year, it's only been two, but it seems like the team has been able to get off to some hot starts, especially compared to what it's been like at home. What's that been attributed to? Uh, it's something I talked about with our guys and, and actually the motivational speaker talked about this morning, um, you know, about that complacency. You know, when you make, mis you make mental mistakes, when you get tired, when pressure gets to you, and then when you, you take things for granted and get complacent, and I, I don't know um, if, you know, being at home and, and you know, we don't have you, – you go on that road, that fear, that tightness. And you're, you're, we talked today a lot about uh, the players said we got we to gotta deliver the first punch, we, we, and we've done that on the road. I, I, ironically, the, if you look at the Texas Tech and Iowa State game, very, very similar scores, like seven to six, eight to seven – Something like that. First TV timeout, make a run. Got it to 17-10 against Texas Tech. Got it, I think, it up, you know, 9 or 10 against Iowa State. And Iowa State, we were able to keep it going. Obviously, we didn't do that against Texas Tech. and They made a, a, a run. But, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, and, I, and I've talked to him about it several times. Uh, you've got to have the emotion. We don't have the home crowd that you've had in the past, uh, that emotion of, of has got to be there. And it can't just be on the road. It's got to be at home also. And I think if you look in the league, I don't know where it is now. I know at one time it was like 10 and four or something. The road teams have won. Uh, I'm not sure where it is now, but uh, it's, uh, you know, it, you can tell that, that the crowd difference uh, is, is really big. Thank you, Coach. Uh, next question of Michael Goins. Michael, you're muted. Pardon me. I guess upon his entry to college basketball for Luke, Luke Kasuki, what would be his role that you guys have had uh, struggles with or low quality from so far this year? Well, he gives you a big guard, and, and obviously he's, he was really known as a shooter, uh, a guy that really understands the game. He's, he comes from a really good program. Shamanad had some, 
you know, high, high level guys coming through there. He led his team to the state final four last year, didn't get to finish it, but uh, just a, a young man that understands the game. We got a good body. He's put on weight, strength. He can really shoot the ball. So a nice, nice mix player for us, so, you know, but uh, you know, it's going to take him a while. It's, he hasn't played basketball, uh, any live basketball and just got involved in some, contact stuff the last week. So it's been since last March. So it, it'll take him a little bit, but I'm just happy for him that he's more involved. He was on scout squad today a little bit. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's been a long, long uh, stretch for him, but he's kept a great attitude. His family's been good. And, you know, hopefully he gets the opportunity to give us, give us a little bit this season. And how do you uh, dissuade your guys from shooting a, uh, just a slew of three-pointers without hurting their confidence and keeping them uh, in the right mental shape? It's a, it's a fine line, there's no doubt. And we've talked about it, I've talked with other coaches about it. You know, it, it, you know we, we've showed tape and, and we'll just say, hey, look, it, it, this is a contested one. This is early, look at the shot clock, it's, it's 18 seconds left. And, you know, I think just, and, and I think that's one thing, you know, I don't think Mike is doing it selfishly. I just think he wants to help the team. And, and they, they got to do a little better job. I thought, for the most part, most of our threes against Texas Tech were good ones, open ones. Shot a couple. Obviously, everyone shoot, takes tough ones in the game. But the more open ones we can work for and the more easy baskets we can get, obviously, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give us a, a boost of offense and hopefully success in the win column.